I'm a builder. I specialize in metalwork, mostly on the classic pickup scene. I was just building for myself weekends and working late nights. And people started to notice my work through social media. And people had this narrative that I was like this big company, but I was really just a guy doing it on the side. I'm Kyle Oxberger with Metal Ox, and this is Retro Reincarnation. So the Grinch is a super important truck. If it wasn't for the Grinch, I probably wouldn't be in business. So the owner of the Grinch, Cameron, he followed me into work because he noticed my truck and the work done on it and he wanted some of that same work done on his truck. He owns a tent shop and he serviced all the dealerships I was working at. The building next to him came up available for lease and it was bigger than he needed, but he didn't want to miss the opportunity because his business was really taking off. He pitched to me, hey, why don't you quit your job and lease half the shop for me? I put my two weeks notice in. That same week, I got calls from other major shops in the country that needed some work done. So I knew it was like a sign, like it was time for me to do my own thing. And here we are now, it's been nonstop and no slowing down. My relationship with UP Car Parts started in 2018. The two main builds I collaborated with UP on would be the 2019 SEMA build Money Shot, which we did for Morgan Youngberg, and then the 2021 SEMA build Prom Queen for John Oro. We did a lot of suspension, metal work. Johnny G did the LS swap in that. Behind me, we have a little like daily driver project for Morgan Youngberg as well. It's gonna be just a shop truck, pretty basic LS swap build. So the 61 Corvair we're building for Carlos that dropped lower. He came to me at Zeno's and said, hey, can I just bring you this carcass of a truck and he just lay it all the way on the ground so with him everything has to be as low as it can go so the blue truck that one's name is moody blue so we rolled that into the shop as a long bed truck in five days we did like a thrash build on it and made it a short bed so on the outside the truck still looks like an old beater truck but underneath it's like better than new it ended up being in a magazine and they documented the whole process so this white truck we got here it doesn't have a name yet it's a 68 c10 Owner's Todd, he's up in Canada, and just a random Instagram DM dropped it off at my house and went back to Canada and said, hey, start building it. And I had never met the guy, he didn't know me, but he trusted me right away, which is pretty cool. So this blue truck I got here, this is from my best friend, Johnny G. He's also part of the UP family, been one of the best guys I've worked with in this industry. Of course, he's doing most of this build. I'm just helping him out where I can with the metal work. All his strong suits are the things I'm weak in, and He's strong in all my weaknesses, so we work great together. We both have the same mindset. We help each other out. Everything we build here leaves with UP car parts. The lighting's great. It's one of those things where it's like an immediate return on your investment. Every time you drive your truck at night, it's a noticeable difference in driving experience. Also safety and style, you can't go wrong. We do a lot of short bed conversions here and whenever the truck is not a good candidate to have the bed cut down, we just order a brand new box from UP. It's great because all the panels are ready for paint, all the restoration parts, all their hardware, they bolt right together, they fit nice, they look just like factory. It saves a lot of time because all we gotta do is bolt it together and spray some paint on it. So if somebody came to me and wanted to get into the scene and it was their first time having a truck or building a truck, I would tell them, buy the best truck you can afford to start with. Um, don't buy like a $2,000 rust bucket in a marketplace and think you're gonna upgrade it all. Buy the best truck you can afford and then do mods that are instant gratification. Upgrade your interior, your stereo, air conditioning and lighting because those things means more than having $5,000 wheels that is gonna cost you $10,000 to put them on the truck. I've been in this scene since really it took off. And 10 years ago, everybody was figuring everything out and figuring out how to mod them and figure out what parts work. And then now it's to the point where we've evolved so much. It's almost like going to get Froyo or whatever. You just build your recipe. You like want these wheels, you want this color, you want this interior. It's a little monotonous right now. And I think in the next 10 years, it'd be great to see people start pushing the envelopes, um, doing unconventional swaps, more heavy body mods, just bring it to somewhere else and not let this scene go stale. My goal by the end of next year is to have a truck that I built. I'm gonna break all the rules and probably gonna piss off a lot of people. I wanna do a front wheel drive, probably a Honda swapped truck, just something that you don't see at all these truck shows.